it's difficult to find all the conclusive evidence in this case. Let me go back on the facts. It was the evening of October 3rd, 1980. Uh, it was outside a synagogue, which was packed, and then a bomb exploded. Investigators got on the site very fast, and they found out, found out that the bomb was placed on a motorcycle. They found the place where the motorcycle was purchased. Then they found the hotel where the person who purchased that motorcycle had stayed. They found several witnesses who could describe the suspect. But then years and years went by. Intelligence services pointed to a Palestinian group, the FPLP Special Operations Unit, but investigators here uh, in the justice system, they needed concrete evidence, not in just intelligence hints. They wanted some proof. Italy found proof in 1981. They found a passport of a man called Hassan Diab, the suspect, a passport used to get from Beirut to Europe just before the attack and back from Europe to Beirut after the attack. But the passport remained in the archives of Italian, Italian intelligence and French uh, justice only got it many years later. So that part, that is a part of the problem. Another part of the problem are many uh, tensions around this. We're not speculating on all the political tensions, but a few years ago we discovered a former chief of interior intelligence said that he had concluded a deal with one a terror group, not the one we're talking about here, uh, that France will not go after its members if that group stopped attacking French soil. So that's something that happened around the same time in 1983. So we know there was this tension. Uh, the French authorities uh, tried to keep terrorists out of the country, so it said it would not prosecute them. That's part of the problem. Now, you were saying that uh, Hassan Diab isn't here. And in fact, his uh, defense says that if this case took such a long time uh, to get to a trial, well, it's because it's bogus. There's nothing in it. The passport is forged, was stolen, was forged. Uh, basically, there are a few testimonies, but nothing holds up. And that's why there were so many U-turns in this case. First, he was extradited here. That was complicated. And then another judge just said that well, this should be dismissed because uh, the elements of proof were not sufficient. Uh, and then another judge yet reversed that decision again. So the trial is taking place here. But Hassan Diab, who was released in 2018, he's not coming back. That's why he's not here. Well, this is a complicated case. So this relies on a passport, I think, with the Spanish authorities stamped in and then stamped out. Diab, as you said, spent time in prison, was released a few years ago uh, on insufficient evidence grounds. He's now in Canada. Now, all this time on... Will any of the victims, any of the victims' families be in court? Very few. Uh, many have passed away since. One of the victims, a man who was 22, was killed while riding a motorcycle outside the synagogue. His parents used to go every year to the synagogue bringing flowers. But they passed away a long time ago. There's one victim who keeps coming to court for every uh, session, every time, and she's here today. Uh, she was... 13 at the time, celebrating her bat mitzvah on the day of the attack. And she's coming back. And like others, like uh, uh, others, she says that the important thing is to push this to the end, to find out whether Hassan Diab is guilty or not. Maybe he's innocent. But she th th thinks it's important that French justice go to the end, push to the end this case to know the truth. Uh, Shirley Sitbon, our correspondent outside the court in the Hassan Diab case. Thank you for joining us.